to use it because my ex moved us 90 miles outside of the city and he didn't want me to pursue any kind of career. Um, I did work in real estate and as I was getting to a very high level of success in property management, he just found ways to manipulate our life in a way that I shouldn't work. I, and, and and that I left that career because God forbid I have joy or success or achievement or financial freedom to be able to leave him. You know, these are all very typical narcissist things. So I just wanted a few things in life. That's all I wanted. So it's been three years and three months since my divorce as of today. And in that very short time, in which I am healing from domestic violence and a lifetime of trauma and triggers and PTSD and my nervous system is just <laughs> off the off the charts. In the midst of all that, I published a book and I have two more books coming out and they are to help other victims of abuse relate and connect and understand and, and, and see their situations and the people they're with for what they are. I have been on over 100 podcasts, including yours, because people are being really receptive to this. And it's very unfortunate that victims of abuse are just afraid to share their stories. They're so afraid of exposing their abusers. And so I'm just kind of taking one for the team and saying what needs to be said because people need to know what's going on. Yes, I was going to my son's t-ball games with cupcakes and a smile, but I was dying inside. I was dying for somebody to see what was going on because even my ex, you know, like Ted Bundy, the serial killer, they're handsome and charming and nobody has any idea. I've also been traveling. I am remarried to a longtime friend, and I've known his family 18 years. Otherwise, there's probably no way I could have dated and gotten married in that short of time. But he has been, it has been amazing because I think to some extent, as much as I hate people calling themselves broken and damaged, to some extent, I think I felt that I was inept at relationships and that it probably wouldn't be a good idea for me to get involved with anybody until, you know, whatever time it was that it, that it took to heal from all the other stuff. But I found that it was actually more effective to be in a relationship with somebody where I was triggered and I was kind of being forced to feel things and have to deal with things because I think too many times people hide and they isolate because they don't want to get triggered and they're scared and what if it doesn't work out and all these things and I was there too but the problem is yeah I had all the sheets and the YouTubes and the therapy stuff saying you know if you're not to self-regulate follow these steps well you know, you can have the toolbox, but if you don't have a need for the tools, you know, so you have to get triggered. You have to go through the process of actually practicing the things that you're being told in therapy and the things that you're reading about. And eventually it gets easier. And I, I think that that's what's helped me along because now things that might have put me in fetal position crying in a corner two years ago, I'm just like, eh might bother me for like five minutes, maybe 10, maybe a day, depending how bad it is. But I'm not, I'm not worried about it because, you know, I, I, I know who I am now. And I know that, you know, I, I know my worth and I know what I deserve. And I have somebody that has given me a safe space to be and feel and do and whatever it is. And let me tell you, all those trips I wanted to take, we went on nine trips all over the world. Our first year together, we went on five the second year and I just stopped counting. We just, every time we come home, we plan the next trip and it's been amazing. So I don't want anyone to think that if they're in a bad situation, no matter how bad it is, your life is not over. It's not over. There is so much more. You just have to be the one to make the choice. And that's the thing about it. You have to decide and you can decide because all of those years, 25 years I was with my ex, I thought he was the one holding me there. I thought he had that collar around my neck and holding the leash. Guess what? 
the night that I decided I was 100% done with this man, guess what I did? I unclicked that collar or that leash off the collar. I was free. I freed myself and I know other people can do it. It's going to be harder for some than others, but it's absolutely possible.